Evil All the victims were slashed to death. With a knife? No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The giant scissors once again search for prey. The trail of terror stretches across Europe, from Norway to England. Hi everyone and welcome to Clock Tower 2 or as known in the West just as Clock Tower for some reason but um, this is pretty much Clock Tower 2. It's the direct sequel to um, Clock Tower The First Fear. Um, so yeah we're pretty much completely picking up from where it left off. So uh, brilliant we'll go dive right in there start a new game. I don't know about you but that intro despite all its flaws like spelling and terrible sound mixing and everything is fucking awesome I think. Anyway, let's go straight into it. I'm sorry if you can see the Fraps timer. It is a bastard like that. All right, so we're starting off as Samuel Barton. It might lag a bit here. I'm sorry about that. I did this when I tested it as well. Sorry. It does stop though eventually. Anytime. What are you yeah. doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. All right. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. Right, well, this is Samuel Barton, everyone, otherwise known as quite possibly the biggest prick in the franchise, feeding off an innocent girl's poor, traumatised fucking memories of a murder that she was involved in for fascinating research material. What a cock! Hmm, there is a faint smell of ammonia. Why? Basically, you just have to look at everything. It's pretty much like the first one. A file cabinet. What's this? There's a memo stuck between the pages. You found hint one. Brilliant. The hints are just things that you can go on to in the menu to just help you in the game. So we'll find them round. Well, this looks like a chair. The clock tower murders. The mass murder of over 10 victims in this case. How intriguing. I wouldn't call it intriguing. Jennifer Simpson, one of the spies. I have to get information out of her for future profiling materials. Yeah, he acts like this is like the most fucking like, you know, like Christmas. Oh, traumatized girl. Brilliant for my research. God, you dick. Ooh, scissors. A giant pair of scissors is on the desk. They're a replica of the scissors used by the murderer in the clock tower case. What's going on? These are like the weapon he used to slash up his victims. Oh, okay, that was weird. <laughs> what the fuck? Right, um, so we're just gonna have a little check around. I think we've checked everything in here. Run, you bloody dickhead. <laughs> but not towards me, you moron. Right, we're gonna go out now. The next, this, uh, this next room is quite annoying because you literally have to check everything about a million times before it'll let you out and it's really annoying. Lately I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. 
Hmm, the staff is still here. Why? Is it, why is that weird? What is it, like, one o'clock in the morning? Yeah, so let's just have a look at bloody everything before it will let us out, because it literally will not let you out until you've looked at everything. A statue, it is called. One of the items found at the scene of the Clock Tower murders. Remember the demon idol? Yeah, that's it. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. Good, and I will be doing a voice for everyone because <laughs> there's a lot of talking. Let's talk to this woman. Professor, Helen left a few minutes ago and she looked really angry. Hmm. Let's talk to her again. You know, Helen and Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, okay, I guess. I guess that's what happens when you live together. One mustn't let their personal feelings get in the way. What the fuck? Why are you some kind of cold-hearted prick? Jennifer is nothing more than another research subject. Dear God. Uh, yes, yes, you're right, asshole. What an ass. Seriously. I can't think of anyone who would seriously, like, get so much fucking sadistic joy out of the traumatized memories of a young girl. Helen's desk. Fascinating. Oh, let's Scissorman mask. Scissorman's rubber mask. A kind sold in cheap novelty shops and seems to be fairly popular. Wait, so everyone can be Scissorman now. So it could be anyone. People certainly buy stupid. Yeah, that they do, Barton. Professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Oh, thanks, Danny. Did you have an appointment for an interview? It's about the clock tower murders, isn't it? Hmm, I guess they want to sensationalize this. Scissor man who really doesn't even exist. Well, how the fuck do you know? Were you there? Scissor man, it'd be cool if you were real. Scissor man is fabulous. Uh, um, just a joke. Oh, yeah, you're fucking hilarious, mate. Yeah, it would be really awesome if he was real. I hope you get stabbed next. Oh, stuffed animal. Looks like a prize wanted a fair. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? And why is it there? Can we have a look at this computer at all? Or do we have to talk to her again? Because you have to talk to them a lot before it will let you out. Until they start repeating it themselves. themselves. I wish I had a cute kid sister. A cute kid brother would be okay too. So basically a cute little sibling, you mean. Fucking hell. Are we, you done? Yeah, you're done. Wish that printer would shut up. What the fuck are we printing? Fucking Pride and Prejudice. Fucking hell. Alright, let's talk to, uh, to Danny again. See if we can get out. You shouldn't keep the reporter waiting too long. You shouldn't keep the reporter waiting too long. Okay, brilliant. Will you, will you let me out then? There is still something I need to do. Oh, for goodness sake. Let's have a look at this. Hopefully this is the last thing to check. Harris's desk. Clipped out of the articles of the clock tower story are scattered about. It seems Harris has gone somewhere. Oh, where's Harris? Let's find out then, shall we? Can we get out now? Thank God for that, because literally, first time I played this, I was like, what more is there to check? And it wouldn't let me out, which was really annoying. There he is. What are you doing outside the ladies' bathroom, you weirdo? Ow, oh, Professor. A newspaper reporter was looking for you on the first <laughs> floor. Oh, thank you. Now, what the fuck are you doing outside the ladies' bathroom, you weirdo? Now, this bit is odd, because we can either be Jennifer or Helen... And in order to be Jennifer, we have to talk to Harris more than once. But if you want to be Helen, you just talk to him once. So we want to be Jennifer, so we're going to keep talking to him. Was there something you wanted to see her about? Um, no. He's always so gloomy. He's top-notch, though, that's for sure. But then, who the fuck are you talking to, mate? Because I hope you're saying this in your head. If you're saying it out loud, then that's a bit rude. Or should we just talk to him one more time just to make sure? Just to make sure. Um, it's just, oh, bollocks. Sorry. She's already gone home. Was there something you... Yeah, we've been through this already. Yeah, what on earth are you doing outside the ladies' bathroom, mate? Seriously. Don't stand there. You just look like a fucking weirdo. Yeah, okay. Let's voice your inner thoughts about Harris. What are you doing, Barton? Are you going to get in the elevator? Or are you just going to stand there being a prick? As usual. Nice green scarf, by the way. Jesus. In you get doing your weird turn. Right, we want to go to the second floor. So if it would let me click on it, that would be, uh, or the first. 
I thought it was the second. Oh, I guess it's the first, then it won't let me click on it, will it? Down we go! And uh, this elevator seems to have no ceiling, which is a bit strange. All right, let's go out. Oh, Professor! I am the one who called you from the Oslo Weekly News. Hey, look, it's Gay Eddie! Because he looks like Eddie Dombrowski from Silent Hill 2 in a pink shirt, so I call him Gay Eddie. Tim, fuck off, it's Eddie. It's a pleasure. I'm a bit busy. Please keep it brief. Okay. Then I'll get right to the point. Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? What the fuck is Gay Eddie doing? Oh, taking pictures. Taking pictures of a conversation. Fucking fascinating. I can't say anything for sure because the victim's testimony lacks... Credibility. Why? Oh, do you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? Oh, uh, nothing really. It's just that we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And since we'd run into her, we asked her for an interview, but she refused. Oh, don't blame her, the poor girl. Bloody hell. She had to watch all her friends get slaughtered, and then she has to put up with a load of reporters. You just said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you're going to say. That monster she was talking about, the Scissor Man. And whether he really exists or not. Bum, bum, bum. That's it. That's right. Keep taking pictures, Gay Eddie. We're not done yet. That is what our readers believe, because the existence of the Scissor Man has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. Oh, really? I thought they were, like, buying his masks in joke shops and making it into a big fucking joke. That's because trashy gossip magazines like yours have sensationalized the whole thing. Ouch, that hurts. Yeah, what an ass. Not much I can say to that, is there? Nope. Well, let's start from the conclusion. <sighs> it's fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his, his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. That we are, Barton. That we are. But what about what she said? She was scared. Oh, I don't blame her! She thought she, she, she thought she saw something. Oh, my accent's slipping. Okay, that's it. Interview's over. Yeah, stop it, Gaiety. Stop taking pictures. There's something I must be attending to. Oh, uh, well, okay. I understand. Thank you very much, asshole. Sorry, I couldn't be as much help as you had hoped. Asshole! I have to get back to the lab. Brilliant. Well, let's go back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower murders. Who survived? He is supposed to be a young boy about 10 years old. Oh, I wonder who the survivor is. Because I sure as hell didn't see anyone survive, so I wonder who it could possibly be. Right, down we go. Oh, was I on the- oh, I was on the second floor all along, I was gonna say, right, that's a bit- okay, that makes a lot more sense. To the ceilingless elevator again? Well, we call it a lift in uh, the UK. Is Pervy Harris? No, he's gone! Probably went in there to sniff underwear or something weirdo. Right, back to the laboratory we go. Diddy, what are you doing? Get out the laboratory! Oh, there he is! Nope, not panty sniffing, just standing there like a fucking weirdo. Oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on this statue. Why not just ask Jennifer? She's the one who found it. But I guess she didn't say that, did she? She didn't want to get hassled. Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower <laughs> murders is here. Oh, has he arrived already? Damn. Yes, he's waiting in the therapy room. I have to talk to him. Is there something I can do for you? Yes? Is there something I can do for you? Yes! Already. Look at the demon idol again. Stop running away! What are you doing? Well, that's right. It's only going to get an expert opinion on this statue. Yes. We, who are we going to ask? I should probably ask Professor Sullivan, the head of... The head librarian at the Metropolitan Library. Yes, but there was an old butler at the Barrows Mansion named Rick. <gasps> Rick Grimes, walking dead. <laughs> I'll show it to him first if he knows anything. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. As you do. I could ask Harris to show it to him. Ask Harris. Yeah, why not go on then? I don't know if I'm supposed to, but hey. 
All right, I'll ask Harris to show it to her. You know, Professor, you should really stop talking to yourself. It's kind of weird. Harris, would you take this statue and show it to a man named Rick? Is that the statue that was at the scene of the clock tower murders? I might as well find that. Yes, it is. Would you ask him if he knows anything? I'll just put it in my pants. Yes, I'll go and ask him on my way home this evening. Oh, predicting words. Not that it was difficult, but shush. Very good, thank you. Okay, that's that. I should probably go to the therapy. Yes, you should. You've been keeping the waiting for about five hours, you fucking dick. God damn, what a penis head. He really is, Barton. I can't wait until it can be Jennifer. Oh! Thank you very much for coming. How do you do? I am an instructor at the Granite Orphanage. Remember the orphanage from the beginning. I am Edward's guardian. Edward, I thought he completely lost his memory from the shock. Does he remember his name? No, I call him Edward because not having a name to go by makes things very difficult. It certainly does. Edward, dot, dot, dot. Should we talk to... Now, since this is our first day, will you answer some simple questions for me? I don't know. Will you? Okay, Edward. Now I want you to honestly tell me everything you remember about what happened. Ugh, the text is too slow! Uh, yes. Well then, let's get started. Thank God I don't have to be involved in that therapy session. Um, yeah, go on then. I'll save it. Um, but I will be back in part two where we'll be Jennifer. So, yes, I will see you later. Thanks for watching and I'll be back in part two.